yarn lovers, it's Gary, and off to the side is Pixel, my co-star, and we are in our happy place called The Yarn Corner on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Sunday, January the 7th, 2024. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. So as mentioned, my puppy Pixel is here with me off to the side, chewing on her bone that I've given her, and hopefully uh, she's not too much of a distraction. Uh, so if you hear some munching, that is her. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a jam-packed episode today of things that I want to catch you up on. So it's a bit of our update kind of episode that I put together every once in a while. Uh, from 2023, there are some longer makes that I have... Um, brought into 2024 so we'll talk about those they're still either on the hook or on the knitting needles so uh yeah i'll be happy to reflect back on some of those items where i'm at what i'm thinking about those longer projects as we all kind of like are starting new years we want to think about those things that we're bringing into the new year whether they're still items that we love or items that we want to keep working on so i've got a few of those so hope that you enjoy it and then i've got some happy mail as well these got i guess locked up in um customs or transit in post because there was a uh, influx of packages and cards and mail that needed to come through through the holiday so i just received them in the last week or so and uh yeah i'd love to show you those as well here and later down the way, my notes are telling me I'm going to mention some things about what's been going on in this community that I live with, uh, live in with my husband, Chad, and my puppy, Pixel. So if you're interested to stick around, those will be at the end of the video. So all the yarny goodies will be up front, and I guess we should get started. Uh, for those of you who have just clicked on this channel for the very first time, I want to welcome you and let you know that I set this channel up in the beginning to talk about all of my Yarny adventures where I was documenting uh, learning the learning process of knitting and crocheting. So if that sort of thing is of interest to you, then please stick around. I do cover things as well of uh, where I purchase my yarn from, if there's any sales uh, and tools for my craft. So if that is also of interest, Every once in a while, I'll do a video devoted to those things. And yeah, so for the returning people, I want to say thank you for coming back. And it's always wonderful to read your comments as well. And the last video that uh, I put out was the mood board mail draw uh, and the slideshow. So I got some really good feedback from all those wonderful entries. And the winner, Debbie C, did reach out to me. I just want to let everyone know and that box of yarn is sent off to her so she will be re receiving that soon and Debbie C congratulations enjoy your yarn okay before I get started I should talk about what Hank my man form is wearing and he's wearing a crocheted semi-circle shawl that I created using a tutorial from Kerry Penny so Kerry Penny has a YouTube channel here called The Happy Crafty Homemaker. Hi, Kerry Penny. And uh, so I followed it. And it's a great tutorial to use as a base foundation to create a semi-circle crocheted shawl. And so I'll just take it off for you. Uh, it starts off with, in my situation, it starts off with an eight division of uh, various uh, patterns and stitches. So I started here in the middle and it radiated out using the eight. And then I got to a certain number uh, where I could transfer those wedges into a six. So hence, there's a little bit of an arch way there. I think I might have increased uh, on one of the fancier rows where I was doing maybe an arcade stitch or a fan stitch. So it's not a complete flat semicircle, but it's creating these uh, little archway like a crescent. So I really enjoyed and I learned a lot from that tutorial. So I want to say thank you for that, Kerry Penny. Uh, so yeah, I, I had fun changing up some rows from double crochet, which is the base element of what I had situated this shawl. And I'd put some shell stitches in one, some fan and the arcade stitch in another couple of rows that were divisible by the certain row number count that I was at. So yeah, really nice. The yarn that I used was line brand shawl in the ball and I'm not sure what my crochet hook size was 
it was probably a 4.5 or a, um, I think it might have been a 4.5 or a 5 millimeter crochet hook. So yeah, nice and drapey. I'll just leave that there so uh, I won't put it back on hang. Okay, so let's get going on the whips, shall we? These are the ones that I'm bringing over to 2024 that I started many months ago in 2023. And, oh, there goes my cable needle. This is a cable sweater vest that I am making a hoodie, uh, attach a hoodie to. And it was in my notebook that I wrote some notes and I drew some pictures on what I wanted to, it to look like. And I found some um, supporting pattern bits and pieces uh, that I'll talk about as well. So here it is. I'm getting there. I am at the point of, um, that looks a little strange there. I think it's just been crunched up. I'm at the point of separating for the underarms and then doing my um, neck and uh, arm bands. But with the neck, I'm still kind of like contemplating what kind of hood that I want. And on the other side, it's exactly the same. So yeah, it looks a little narrow right now because of the nature of the cable. But when I block and pin it down, it will actually, I will pin it so that it reaches the right width. Um, so it's really a stretchy fabric and It'll open up all of the, the stitch work as well uh, so that you can get to see the cables a, a little better. And it also has been designed so that when it stretches, it will have like maybe an inch of positive ease all the way around uh, the circumference. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping that this will stretch and stay open like a number of other vests that I've done in the past using natural fibers. Uh, beauty about wool is that when you actually pin it down to form it does have that forgiveness and it will it will dry to the same shape and it it won't shrink back to the size that uh, uh, that's too small for you sometimes when you're using acrylic or yeah mostly acrylic uh, the blocking doesn't work as successful and unless it has a large component of it with uh, natural wool fiber. So yeah, I really like that it does have that stretchiness. So the cable that I got support with with my pattern was this central one here. It's called the Celtic Knot and I absolutely love it. It's really showing up well in this lighting. Yeah, it's beautiful. So this is where I found my this is what it looks like, the Celtic Knot. It's a free pattern. Uh, so I'm just working my way through the various different rows on how to repeat it. And I believe there's 16. Yeah, there's 16 rows in the repeat for the Celtic Knot in this variety that I've chosen. And I'll link this down below in the description box as well if you're interested in finding, it, uh, finding a bit more about it. Now, in this pattern here, they're just doing the Celtic Knot on its own. So it make a beautiful... Uh, scarf if you wanted to do something that had texture in it. So yeah. And the knitting needles that I'm using are my Chagu stainless steel five millimeter needles. And the cable length is the 20, it's the 22 inch length. But then with the needles themselves, I'm getting to uh, four and four is like around uh, 30, 32 inches of uh, possible stitch area for uh, me to work with, which is nice. And the yarn that I'm using was a gifted yarn by my good friend Crystal over at Bag -a Day. And it is the Croft yarn. That's it there. This is what I have left of my third ball. And I have three more hanks. I think that will be enough to do just the banding and finishing of the shoulders. And then I'm hoping that two, two full hanks and a bit that I'll have left over will be enough to do the hoodie because it's quite a large area that I need to do to cover the, uh, the head. So this is uh, a 100% uh, Shetland Island wool. And the colorway is called Rolling Hills. If you need the number, it's 793. And it's an Aran Roving 
yarn if you need the details that's all the details there if you want to screen grab it i hope that's in focus i know that's not the best uh clarity of uh re writing because it is a uh kind of an off-white background but yeah that's whip number one that's making its way to 2024 and hopefully it will finish somewhere in this year yeah Okay, so put that to the side. My next long-term project that I've been working on that I'm bringing into the new year is my log cabin blanket. Now, this is the Addy Express. It's the king size uh, machine that I'm using. I did show this a few times, maybe in the summer of 2023, and I've done a little bit more to it. So there it is there. I believe the last time I showed you, I might have had maybe this pink panel on. Uh, so I've now done the, um, the remaining like panels around there. So we are talking the um, the log cabin style blanket is done in panels and you work around a central point and it works up nicely like little stepping panels yeah i'm enjoying it i need to sew in all my ends still and i've got another i think another five panels to do so yeah what do you think it's a practice piece for sure because i am learning how to join as i um kind of like attach the two panels together and working out number counts for the for the um lengths so that they're not bulging over that their number counts are kind of even stevens and also practicing how i want to finish the ends off so i've got an end here because they're all tubes they're print uh, they're they're um processed through the machine the adding machine and i i then grab the tube and i do a uh kitchener stitch bind off and that gives it a nice seamless kind of round quality. And then I will go across the top of this with my next panel and do the next one that attaches this green and burgundy. And I'll go along that way and add a little bit more length to the other side. I'm getting, st all the strands are getting stuck around my feet. So yeah, I'll go to a little bit longer here on this side. Yeah, so it's been sitting there for a while. I do work on it every once and again, but this will be one that goes into my 2024. So yeah, um, I'm using to close off for my tension that I'm using on the knitting machine. With the needle size, I'm using a 4.5 set of millimeter needles. And those are just, uh, I think they were loops and threads variety of of yarn that you can get in Michael's. The It's a 16 inch circumference needle. And yeah, that's it. The yarn that I'm using is all worsted weight yarn. And here are the balls here. These are all of Hirschner's Worsted 8 and the Bohemian Romance collections that you can get from Hirschner's. Uh, as you can see, there's some of the colors that have been used already, uh, like this one here is in the blanket. And as I go further and further along in the blanket, more and more of these big worsted eight balls will be used. I find it's very super soft. It's wonderful to use. And the color palettes that they have, amazing. I do love them. So I just pull out a color that might match up best when I'm working in the blanket and do my strip and add that in and i think from memory i i think i might have around six panels to go and i have plenty of yarn so all the leftover yarn that i have from this blanket will go into a crocheted blanket i've already got an idea on doing uh, hexes and uh, changing up colors uh, i've got a pattern for it as well from ravelry so none of this yarn will go to waste because there are bits and pieces that are floating around that are healthy scraps from uh, after the panels are being done. The plan that I'm working to, not uh, that uh, the technique, but the plan that was drafted out on the 
the blanket itself is from Mowgli and Mowgli has done a cabin blanket, log cabin blanket using crochet, but uh, I'm just using the template for uh, how to start off and work my, my knitted version. Okay, the next one that I have that's coming into 2024 is a project I started in September of last year. I have done this project before and I finished it. It was a wonderful crocheted blanket and I liked doing it so much that I am doing it a second time and making it bigger. So it is the Nature's Walk by Sandra Paul and I am, I think 50 squares into the blanket right now. And because of the size of that I want, I need 150 or 160 uh, squares. I am only a third of the way. So I thought documenting this at the beginning of 2024 in a video format will remind me of where I am right now. So yeah, it's a free pattern and the free pattern has all of the motifs, like the six motifs that are free and the finishing border also tips on how to do certain stitches in photo by photo kind of instructions and how to join also colors that uh, if you get stuck on what kind of colors to use they've got some suggestions here and i really like that it's a fully complete uh booklet that helps you well it's kind of a booklet there's like over 20 pages of information that really helps you. There are diagrams and charts and also an English and US version of uh, when you pick your choice of which one you want to download. You can um, choose your language of what kind of crochet you, you, you normally work with. So all lovely stuff. There's also an additional bonus squares of uh, six different squares that you can put into your blanket and that one is a paid for. So I'll include both of the uh, original Nature's Walk blanket and then the bonus bundles uh, in the description box below. So let's take a look at where I'm at with this. <laughs> 50 squares I said around, around 50. So here we go. This is the, one of the squares from the bonus bundle and it's called Sunshine. Uh, this yarn was the, just trying to find a label for you. Here we go. Willow Rise in the colorway Caramel. And the nice thing about the Willow Rise when you're doing a crochet piece like this is that the yarn uh, variegates slightly in color. So it's kind of tonal. And each of these squares, as, as I'll show and count them through, you will see that there is a slight difference in the color. And I like that because when you're laying out your color palette on the ground, this is what I normally do, and take photos and move the, the, the squares around, um, having a slightly lighter tint or a darker tint means that you can play with the overall effect of your blanket uh, to a greater level of degree of difference. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be stuck with two colors that might not slightly work side by side, but because there are different variations of tone, you might find that you have a bit more flexibility in two colors that really work well because you've got a, a selection of tones to work with. So this caramel gave me, I think that's the caramel one, let me look. Yeah, all of these are caramel. So I got the, the one, two. I did use a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook to make all of these. That's three, four, five, see this is a slightly darker one, six, seven, and that might be a different one. Yeah, that's a different one. Eight, nine, 10, 11. So I got 11, 12. 13, 14. I got 14 of these. I'm showing you the wrong side. <laughs> and that is the wrong side of the square. So these squares are worked face up and always in a, in a circular motion. So you don't really turn the work. Uh, so there's 14 in the Willow Rise. 
and the next one that I did was combination because I was using smaller balls because the willow rice is 150 grams which gives me a lot of yarn and I created the 14 in the sun ray but this one here is called clover and I used a hundred gram ball in the I think this was the style craft in the color teal so that's it there and I got one two three four five six seven so I got seven of those and that's the back side if you are looking to see the back side but that's the clover it's also in the bonus bundle seems like I'm doing the bonus bundle once first and it's Starcraft teal it's a DK 100 gram ball and I got this what did I say seven two four six four six yep I got six out of that Okay, so not as much as the willow yarns. Then the next one, because I needed, I need more of the, oh, I got seven. There's another one of it. Because uh, I needed more of the clover, seven wasn't going to be enough to make 160 uh, squares. So I needed to make more. So I chose a different ball. And this one is from Premier. And it's their DK basic yarn in the colorway called Heritage Blue. And this one was also a hundred gram. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight out of that one. So I got a little bit more. So those are the Heritage Blue. Another square from the bonus bundle is this one here. It's my favorite one. It's called Wheat. James C. Brett Top Value. And the color is called Sage. It's 100 grams in this ball as well. And how many did I get of this one? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in that one. Okay, the next one here is this one here. It's also from the Wheat Square. And I am using Starcraft's Stone colorway. And that's how much I had left. And how many do I have of this one in that 100 gram ball? I got one, two, three, four, five. So I had five in that one. And I also used a, another ball that was very similar to the stone color. And I thought this would be a nice one for wheat. And I think I lost the ball band for this one, but that's how much I have left there. Oh, is this it here? No, I found it. It's called Light Brown and it's from Premier Basics DK. And how many did that 100 gram ball give me? One, two, three, four, five, six. The next one that I have is, I uh, started a new one, and this is from the foundation or the, uh, the original Nature's Walk blanket, and it's called Buds. And I am using this beautiful color. I love this color with teal. This works really well uh, with the caramels as well. And I've just started it. It's called, uh, I'm using the Hayfield, which I think is, is Serta. Is that correct? My ball band busted. But it's the Hayfield Bonus DK Bundle. And it's 100 grams. <laughs> That's it there. And the colorway is called Pumpkin. I don't know. It's kind of like maybe a pumpkin pie, kind of baked pumpkin with some spices. More brown than orange. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's this one. And so far I've done three of these in the buds. So we've got one, two, three. 
and that's that colorway. So that's where I stand right now. I think there's probably around 50 squares there. And in my box is devoted all of the colors that I'm gonna choose for the next squares. Um, my favorite that I'm working with that I found in the last uh, blanket and this one is the Willow Rise because I do like the fact that it does give me that variegation that I like, the tonal quality. And it also has nice soft, uh, kind of like a, a washed feel to it. And I think that gives a nice texture to the blanket. Uh, so I've got a few of those colors still to go. That one was charcoal. This one here is called a stone wash. And there's another one of those Hayfield bonus bundles in a color called bronze. Uh, I've also chosen to put in some of uh, this yarn. I'm, I haven't worked with this yarn for the blanket before, so I'm going to have to test it to see if it works with the same kind of thickness and end result of it being a similar size square without mod modifying the pattern. And this one's from Yarnby. The colorway is called... Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Rustic Romance. Is that the colorway? No, that must be the collection. Uh, and I don't see where the color is on this. Hmm. Rustic Romance. Color is called Wheat. So it's very fitting with uh, the colors that I've got too. This one has specks in it. And I do like the interest in the different kind of uh, styles of yarn that I'm putting in. Some are solid, some are heathered some are uh, slightly tonal and this one seems to be specked with something so I, I'm gonna uh, lay them all out once I finish them and play around with the arrangement. I've got a bright color here from Stylecraft. This is probably the brightest one and it's called Tomato. I like that. So these are the colors that I have left using mostly teal blues and uh, like orangey uh, browns uh, as my as my kind of focal point. There are things as well that have a sm more smoky lavender as well in there. So this one is called Orchid. Yeah. So I'll catch you up at key moments when I'm working through this. So you might not see this for a while, but know in the background that I am working on it. Okay, the last project that is making its way from 2023 to 24 is something that I just started in December and I really am enjoying this make. So I do put a couple of rows on it, a few hours a week on this uh, lovely beauty and it's called the Cosmic Dandy. Now that's by Julie Knits in Paris. I have the pattern here. That's what it looks like. It's a paid for pattern. And the designer's name is Julie Dubrow. The nice thing about this pattern is that it does offer up two uh, designs in the one. Section one is the same in both designs. And then you make a decision on section two with the vertical stripes, whether you want to do extra vertical stripes, less vertical stripes, or if you want to do extra brioche, you can do extra brioche in section three. So this is uh, the one I'm working to right now. I'm making my decision. I'm at close to the section of section two to make the vertical stripes. And I'm absolutely loving it. Look at that. I'm getting vibes. I love these colors together of Byzantine artwork or 70s fabrics. Uh, yeah, it's given me all those wonderful hypnotic kind of remnants from the past. And I like the way that it's working up. The fabric is nice and drapey with this, these needles that I'm using, uh, the Chagu. I think it is the 3.5 set of knit, knitting needles from my set. And I'm choosing the longest cord that I have. And I think it's 50 inches. So when the cosmic grows and I'm getting then to the brioche section at the end, 
this stitch count is like probably around 300, 400 stitches. So I need a lot of space for it to grow. It is a semi-circle uh, constructed knit pattern that I start here on a garter tab and, and then move forward without giving too much of the pattern away. Uh, so yeah, it's using sock weight yarn and I'll show you the colors. Now, I realized in the beginning when I was working on this that I would run out of certain colors for my A, B and C selection. So uh, I'm set with A. A is going to make it all the way through to the end of the piece. But B and C I have to change out, which I'm happy to do because I want to incorporate some mohair as well into section two of this uh, vertical stripes that I'll be approaching in the next couple of rows. So here we go. Number A is a hand dyed yarn here that I did. I cooked it up in the garage. I think it was um, maybe September of last year. And I used the Regia sock yarn in the colorway beige. It may have had some heatheredness to it, but it was fairly much a solid beige. And I soaked it in Aztec gold and chestnut. And I sprinkled some chestnut for pops of specks in there. Not too uh, dramatic, just a little bit of difference in colour. So it will gradate from one tone to the next and have these lovely textures in them. So that's colour A. I have enough for the full for the full uh, project. Now colour B is the one that I'm going to change out because this is all that I have left of it and it's attached. It came in a set uh, that I had receive I purchased a mystery bag from Judy and she has a YouTube channel here as well and her YouTube channel is called Judy's Creations in Crochet. Uh, so Judy had put together was destashing some of her yarn and this came in a in the mystery bag in a bundle of maybe six minis and they all had the highlighter names uh, attached to them. So it does look like a highlighter green. Perhaps it's highlighter yellow. I don't know. Highlighter yellow to me looks more green anyway, but um, it's this bright yellow green and it has specks and flecks in there as well, as you can see. A really nice yarn and it's bringing that pop of colour that I love so much to that fabric. And I will need to uh, transition out this green and I'm going to be putting mohair in for that green. Now, I'm not too sure it I pulled this one for the mohair, but as it will be A and B doing the, the mohair, uh, sorry, the, the vertical section, I might find that I might want to play a different color mohair in the vertical stripe so that you get a, a definite uh, a definite line contrast of where the lines are going. So I might switch this out because I do have more mohair into something that's more of a lime green. Uh, the last and final colour that I'm putting in is colour C, which is this mustard colour, and it is from Hobby. Hobby generously uh, sent me this yarn to review, and it's called Unicorn Yarn in the solids, and it's called, uh, the colourway is called Mustard. The colour number, I believe, is 10. And because I only have that much left, and it's only going to get me to section uh, one and maybe a little bit of section three. I am going to switch it out with my darker variety of hand dyed that I did at the same time I hand dyed this one and then that will end my uh, my section three with brioche and I will be alternating those two together and I think that will bring some weight in the color towards the end of the garment and it will have that nice uh, edging I think. Uh, so it will create its own border through the play of colour of the darker style with that brown. So those are all the colours that I'm using and one last look at this amazing piece here. I know all the ends aren't woven in yet. There are quite a few of them to weave in but yeah, after look, talking about all those colours, perhaps maybe you can see them a bit better now in the design. That highlighter green is... I'm here for it. I love it. I love it so much.
everything's cleared away and now I've got some space to move on to the next part of the episode which is happy mail and ahead of the game I want to say thank you to everyone who sent me a card for the holidays or some yarn in a gift that they think oh Gary has not tried that yarn before may not know about this brand so I want to say thank you and it's never ever necessary to send me anything I just want to head that up uh, if you want to interact with me, I really appreciate the interaction and there's always a chance to interact with me in the comment section of the video. So I do appreciate those as well. Very, very much more than you, sh than, than you could ever imagine. So let's start with the cards and here we go. We've got the first one. It's a beautiful design of a red robin bringing happy holiday cheer. The banner reads merry and bright. Now I've read the card from Elaine here. I won't read it on video, but uh, thank you, Elaine, for this wonderful holiday card. Next one I have here is from a friend, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl, and we're uh, doing something special together. I won't be talking about it until, I guess, at the end, perhaps. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, Cheryl, I, I have it, and it's going to be started very soon. And the next one that I have here is from Australia and my bestie in, I guess, the college days, maybe university days, uh, my good friend Camilla sent me something and I was umming and ahhing about whether or not to show it on camera because it was, it's really not part of like the Yanni community. Well, I guess it is a little bit. Um, but she's, she's someone very dear to me. And, uh, but when I opened the, the package up, I thought, yes, it needs to be shown because it's, is re yarn related. So again, I won't read the personal inscription here on video, but I have read it. OMG. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, wonderful, wonderful Christmas card. And something special came in this package. So thank you, Camilla. I have opened it, but here we go. It is a, what is it called? Needle felting? It's needle felted and it's a, a Christmas ornament for my tree. And we, we need to give this creature a name, don't we? So it does have a stripy sweater and it looks to be a reindeer of some nature, but I love the red and white. It's very Canadian colors and Christmas as well. <laughs> but I love the detail on the legs, little hooves that they have, and the antlers. It's so wonderful, wonderful. I love it. And it's, it's light. It's very light. It feels durable. It's not fragile at all. Uh, but yeah, let's think of a name for the deer. Thank you so much for that. I love it. Love it so much. So that will go on the tree next year and be part of my time to be nostalgic and think back over all of the experiences and connections that are made here on the channel. So the next one that I have, I'm just going to put that on the ground. Oh, uh, Pixel is saying hi to someone down there. <laughs> is a present that I received from Emmy and Emmy sends me a lot of wonderful things that have kind of an edge to them and this is also a new type of hobby. Uh, the envelope said that she has started uh, doing this hobby as well. So in here it did come with a with a card but I think or a letter, maybe? I don't know where that is, but um, I have read it and got all the information about uh, Emmy's decision on why she sent me this, but it is a cross-stitch kit. And I've never done cross-stitch before. So in the kit, I get everything that I need. Uh, so I'm getting my thread and my instructions, my design my little uh, mesh that I guess you cross stitch in and a frame so that I could put my cro finished cross stitch into. 
That's so cool. And Pixel just ran off with something. <laughs> Maybe my notes. I love that. So thank you, Emmy. What a great box. Now, if you're interested in finding a little bit more about this box set, I'm going to try and locate it online and then include it down in the description box below. The next box comes from Edith and Edith is in Germany. So this package came from Germany. Now I have opened it up and Edith, I went down the rabbit hole of looking at all this wonderful yarn and new to me, I have never felt or known about this yarn before. So I do appreciate this. And looking down at the post cost, the packaging and all the wonderful things inside, this is well and truly above and beyond uh, my expectations. I don't have any expectations to begin with, but uh, you have blown my mind with such wonderful, wonderful gifts. And I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, let's start with the card here. Now it's in German, but I get the gist that it is uh, wishing me a happy new year and a, a good Christmas, like a Merry Christmas. Now I've read the back of the card, which is the personalized note from Edith, but I won't share it here. It's personal. So I know that you all understand. Now part of the beauty of this box is the yarn, but also even as beautiful, or if not more, is the wonderful creations that Judith has, sorry, that Edith has uh, included in her box here. So these are ornaments that will go on my tree next year. And again, this is the special part of me putting the tree up and remembering the community that uh, I'm connected to. So very nostalgic, but look at that handiwork these snowflakes i'm wondering what size hook that was used for this was it one of those metal thread like hooks so stunning and i have another one here just beautiful beautiful uh here are some other wood cut ornaments that could be either tags on gifts or maybe go on the tree as well. This one is more of a lightweight one. I'd be worried about um, it breaking. So it may, there we go on my black shirt, it works well. It is a, a temple or a, uh, some building structure with the star, uh, the guiding star at Bethlehem. Love that. And has some wonderful garnish here. Okay, I'm seeing a little pouch bag in, in here and I am happy to <laughs> receive more knitting needles because I don't have enough a knitting needle. Sometimes when I'm doing socks, I will have one pair on one side and then I won't be able to start the, the second pair until it's finished. I know I can do a uh, magic loop and do two up, but um, yeah, I do have this size so it would be nice to do two on their own separate <laughs> yeah i love that thank you and something that intrigued me when i was looking through this black pouch was this finger color work uh it's like a finger uh thimble for a lack of better word so it fits on your finger and as you're knitting you have each of your stranded colors run through the gate there and they're separated and so when you're knitting you can um choose to uh knit your maybe it's this hand here hmm if you're continental it might be on this finger and if you throw it's probably on that finger so yeah i can't wait to try it it will need a lot of practice i have a feeling because sometimes when you are automatically using your hands to do a special technique over so many years and then you have to retrain your uh, behavior your muscle memory kicks in and sometimes it's hard to kind of like change it up but a few practices with that and it might be a good way of doing color work and keeping everything straight in your head and your tension might be a little bit e more even so I'm looking forward to using that 
And now for this wonderful yarn that I received and I'm just feeling it, I'm feeling it and thinking, this is so soft. What do I rate it out of five? Five being my softest. It's definitely a 4.5. If not, it gets full marks for softness. But here it is here. It's the Lana Grossa. I have known about this uh, branded yarn before, but I've not never had the collection that I'm holding here. It's called Benesseri. Benesseri? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It might be in a different language. So it is, it looks to be like a chain spun yarn with some blown fibers in it. It's really super light and it looks to me to be a four weight yarn uh, with that extra spring in it. So when you pull it, it does get thinner. And that's great for if you're doing some stitch work that needs to be more involved, maybe going back in on itself a few times so that when you are stretching the fibers that you can get your hook into a smaller space because it has that give. Uh, so the color here is 003, not a name, just a number. And it is all in a different language. Oh, English is featured here in the ingredients. So it's 45% cotton, 32 alpaca, 23 polyamide, 50 grams, offering up 125 meters. And does it give me manufacturing or, or details? On, made in Italy. And the knitting needle suggestions here is six to seven. That must be US. I'm not sure because that would be quite a thick millimeter. Mm, but it is a European. So it would be six millimeter, seven millimeter in knitting needles. No crochet hook suggestion. They are saying you can uh, wash this with a temperature of 10. So that's probably cold water and to lay flat to dry. So yeah, it's a lo what lovely color, very neutral. It'll go with other things if I choose to do color work, but I have a feeling from this box, I want to keep them very neutral and this light lighter uh, collection as is. So I got three balls of that. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And new to me also from Lana, uh, sorry, Lana Grossa is the Alicia yarn here. Never had this before. And it's got the sparkle, the bling. I actually don't have any yarn. I don't think that's on a bobbin like this or wound this way. I'm going to say this looks to me like a bit of a three weight yarn, maybe sport weight, three to sport weight yarn. So two to three. And it does have that lovely sheen to it. Is it picking up? I wonder I have to get the light on that, but I'm getting sheen, lots of shimmer. So the fiber content of this is 76 cotton, 20% recycled polyester and 4% polyester, 50 grams, 135 meters, which is the same as this one in length. So that's great. Uh, this also is a product that is made in Italy. And the color that I'm getting here is the number as well, number three. Washing instructions are to, mm -mm, it has a, a tub with 30 degree heat on it and two lines. So that might be hand wash and lay flat to dry. The knitting needle size is a 4.5 to five millimeter. Uh, yeah, so I think that might be a three weight yarn. Love it. So I got a number of balls in this uh, box of this yarn here. So I've got eight balls all together. So there's two, four. I'm not going to be able to hold them all together. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to try. But I have eight of those. And this is the one that sent me down the wild goose chase of looking online at this particular yarn. It's called Lol, Lolo Create, Lolo Create, and the yarn itself is called Dudu. Uh, what can I tell you about this ball of yarn here? 
it's a cake actually. It's really, really sort of mid soft. I would say the uh, alpaca, I think it's probably alpaca that's the fuzz, does have a little bit of tooth to it, but I do like the effect that it gives me with the almost heather tweed like quality between the foundation threads and then the mohair thread. That's a beautiful yarn. Oh, and the softness factor is probably a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, let me read. It says here it's 70% alpaca baby. So I think they are uh, baby alpaca. And 25% lana merino. And I think lana just means wool, if I'm not mistaken. And it's 5% PA. Uh, in this 100 gram cake, I'm getting 250 meters and it's made in Italy. So I absolutely love this yarn. The website has many different blends of the yarns with alpaca and it all, they all have the style of like, you can see the foundation, whether it's a shimmer or a lurex or uh, uh, some sparkle. And then they have the fuzzies. Uh, they also have other lines as well, which are delightful. So in the doo-doo, I got four, four of the cakes. One, two, three, four. That's enough for me to do. Um, uh, let me see. 250, so that's 1,000. I could do a sweater vest. I love my sweater vests. Oh, that would be nice and cozy, that's for sure. Uh, the last thing that I'm seeing in here is the Lana Grossa accessories little um, booklet. So it might be a lookbook for a certain season. Oh yes, it is for 2023-24. So it's it's right now and current. So Lana Grossa has all of these patterns that I could work up. And I like that because it gives me a lookbook for the season. And ideas to use the yarn. I love this so much. Thank you so much, Edith. This is beyond, beyond what was necessary, but nothing is ever expected here. Uh, I love, I love it. I love it so much. I'm going to put everything away and we'll move on to the next one. And um, my final package that I received was from a YouTube crafter that I love dearly. Uh, her name is Erin and she has a YouTube here called Crafting Kitty. Hi Erin and Brian and the kids and the animals. So I uh, started watching Erin's channel maybe around a full year ago now. Is that true? Well, wow, time goes by so quick. Uh, so Erin has wonderful Manx wonderful um, acquisitions that she purchases from all over the place and I'm always curious to see what she's doing. Uh, her Friday evenings with poor decisions with Brian is a great fun um, exploration of different types of ideas that they try out online and whether that's through eating or <laughs> trying a different product, uh, it's always fun. So. I received a package from Erin and Brian, so I want to say thank you so much. This is the card that I received. It says, Merry Christmas to you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I also have received two of these Whirly Gig cakes, which are new to me. I have not tried them before from Cascade, and I got two in this wonderful so my color, very retro style color palette. And I love them. They're in greens. Uh, let's take a look at what you're getting. It is 60% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon and 20% uh, acrylic. I forgot my reading words then. Uh, 200 grams in the cake offering up 546 yards or 500 meters. It is suggesting to use a 3.75 to 4 millimeter set of knitting needles and I think crochet hook. 
It's uh, care instructions here read machine wash, tumble dry, nice easy care instructions. The colour number is 16. I don't think that they have a name for this one because I know Cascade Yarns would prefer to use the number and not the name even though the, the colours do have names and it is a product that is made in China. So there it is again. I don't know what kind of uh, thickness that would be because they normally have a classification on here but I'm gonna say that that is probably a uh, I'm gonna say some maybe a sport weight to three a sport weight to a light three yeah very very soft oh my god yes I could wear that against my skin with no undergarments required so I'm giving it a four out of five for softness very very nice there's no prickle there's no pinch and it smells it smells great whatever Erin is using to store her yarn uh it's giving it a nice fragrance so I got two of those enough to do a huge scarf or a shawl and it's very squishy I like that thank you so much Erin and Brian for sending me this not only did I get the yarn and that wonderful card, I got one of Erin's own crocheted beanie pieces. So I absolutely love it. It's like a granny square, kind of a classic uh, double, classic double crochet kind of crown, increasing to a granny square for the body. And it looks to be a single crochet border for the brim. A couple of rows of that. Erin, do you have the pattern for this or tutorial that we watched? Uh, so yeah, let's take a look and see how it fits. Perfect. It has a lot of room in there. So uh, it's comfortable around the head. I have a huge noggin. So uh, my head's, I think, 23 inches circumference and I kind of like having things around 24 inch but this is perfect there's no there's no um uh it's not strangling my forehead so that's kind of good nice beautifully done and smells great I I don't know what yarn was used for this but it is in my favorite colors the aqua greens and uh foresty colors and i'm gonna say that there's probably some alpaca in there or is that from maybe the the cakes i'm not sure erin you'll have to let us know what yarn you used as well i absolutely love it uh so that is the happy mail and i'm gonna move now into talking about what I've been up to in the community. So if you've just been sticking around for the Yarny goodies, then um, thanks for uh, staying this long and I'll see you in the next episode. So it's been a couple of busy weeks, I guess, because we've had Christmas, we've had New Year's. What have we been up to? Well, let just put these down here. I went away to a small community, took a ferry uh, for the last three days of 2023 so we we cheered in the new year in a different part of where I'm at, where I live and it's called Powell River and Powell River is a small community that was built up around a mill the mill no longer works but they've converted it all into artists uh, residences and shops with crafts and all that sort of wonderful thing so there was a yarn store there that I visited and it was closed for the holidays so I was like out of luck uh, I did do some window shopping and I've got some photographs of that so I'll put that towards the end uh, they had a whole wall of Canadian artisans hand dyed yarns and I was like looking through the window thinking oh I wish I could get in there and take a look at some of the name brands and what kind of yarn bases they're using and the, the colors I could see they were all wonderful but it didn't happen I did go online to see what this store it was called the Knitter's Nest 
and I'll link it down below. Uh, if you go over to take a look, it's not it's not really a selling point of a website. It just shows what brands they have. Uh, so there's no feature there to order online, but it just talks about the store and how it was built and about the store, all that sort of thing. So um, I will have to take another visit later down the way uh, throughout the course maybe of this year we'll go across because it is easy access for us. We take one ferry from where we live, not too far away, there's a ferry, and we will be pretty much 20 minute drive from there to the mill area where the yarn store was. Uh, so there were six of us who went to enjoy a Airbnb. Uh, I've got footage of that as well. So they had this lovely park next, right next door to where we were uh, for, you know, just walking around. It was a bit cold, so we didn't really go out for much walking. Uh, and it was access to the beach with uh, maybe a minute's worth of walking to get to the beach. And it was a rocky beach with lots of dry wood that was sort of rolling up from the oceans and, and sort of planted themselves onto the shoreline. So uh, beautiful, rustic kind of feel. And the place we stayed in was amazing. They had just built it in 2023. So the year that we went there was the, its first year. Um, and they had everything that we needed. Uh, so that was including like all the kitchenware, all of the bathroom stuff, like the linens and the towels. Uh, they had a hot tub and we made good use of it. So we had a lot of fun playing board games for the three days and just good quality time to catch up with the other couples that we hadn't seen in a long time. So uh, much eating had been done as well. And we uh, had interesting uh, and well, delightful, delicious meals that people were kind of throwing in together and doing experiments. So uh, no complaints there. Uh, yeah, and that was our New Year's Eve. Uh, what did you guys get up to on New Year's Eve? Some of you have already written some stories and comments about what you got up to. I get a lot of uh, stories from you spent them at home with friends or you were crafting a way to keep yourself occupied and uh, watching TV was a big thing as well. So let me know what you got up to. Uh, Pixel will start another class next Wednesday night. Uh, it'll be a six week PetSmart program that she's doing that the instructor has designed specifically for the group that she was in uh, previously doing her, what was her, she graduated from the advanced class. I think it was advanced class or graduates class. And the new program that she's put together for the dogs of her class is called Brain Games. So it's all to do with keeping dogs interested so that they don't um, go into doing something that they shouldn't be doing, like what Pixel just did before. <laughs> During this filming, she ripped up some of the cards and I'm really frustrated with her, but um, it's partly my fault because I should have had her out of the room. I was just testing to see how she was doing. And um, so, yeah, I'm I'm upset with her and she's downstairs right now, cooling her heels. So yeah, um, what else has been going on? So normally what I also do with this part of the segment is that I talk about what I've been watching to give suggestions on what you potentially could sit your way to, to keep your interest or keep you entertained as you're working on your patterns. So I can, uh, I've got one here, although there, there are a few other movies, but I only had time to write uh, kind of a description of one. And it is a Netflix movie that is called Good Grief and it stars Daniel Levy. Uh, he has produced it. I think he did some writing and he had some help with family members as well to, to produce this film. And I'll read you what I have written, <laughs> see whether it makes any sense. Uh, a storyline of loss and exploration of emotions. The loss is at the very beginning of the movie and highlights the main character's movements into different feelings from sadness, anger, and then finally into acceptance. Uh, telling the story brings the dynamic of friends and strangers together. The tempo of acting never gets above any tipping points. 
So I think it's even keel all the way through. And I would uh, bookmark it as beautiful candy postcards from Paris. So um, visually very pleasing. A soft melodramatic Hallmark style approach to the film. Uh, I liked it and to watch and listen to it while I was working. So occasionally I looked up and I was reminded of those beautiful images of uh, picture postcard Paris. And uh, there is a fantastic scene in the movie where there is ex an exchange of the main character's uh, kiss of a, uh, like a new friend in the in the room where the Monet water lily paintings are. And I thought that was quite the most powerful and striking uh, scenes of the movie. So if you kind of enjoy that uh, style of hallmark and soft melodramatic uh, approach to storyline, then this could be a movie that you might enjoy. Let me know if you've watched it and what you thought about it as well. So with the uh, closing remarks, I just want to say thank you again for uh, joining in on this episode. Hopefully you found some things of interest and uh, enjoyed the happy mail that I received as well as much as I did. And I will catch you up in the next video. I'll see you then. Bye.